With me today, I have Jim North, Interim Group Chief Executive Officer of FTSE 250 company Ferexpo. Um, Jim, you're currently the world's third largest exporter of iron ore pellets for the global steel industry. Um, for those who don't know, could you just please explain what iron ore pellets are, how you extract them and then process them for export? Yeah, sure. Um, iron ore pellets is, is not much different uh, than, than standard iron ore fines that is produced. We mine uh, in the same method. Uh, we crush and grind the material uh, to make the material a higher grade. Um, the additional thing that we do is uh, what's called pelletization, uh, whereby we combine the fines with some binding agents and we fire those pellets to make them hard. Uh, that's actually doing an additional process uh, and benefits the steel makers considerably in terms of the use of the material. All fair exposed iron ore comes from uh, Ukraine. I mean, what's it like operating there? Is it more difficult than other countries? And, and, and what are the risks? No, I think Ukraine is, uh, is quite a good environment uh, for us to operate in. Obviously, we've got 52 years of history uh, with our, our three operations there. Uh, we've got three deposits that we're exploiting at the moment. Uh, it's uh, very advantageous to us to operate in Ukraine. That's one of the advantages that Fair Expo has over some other pellet producers in the world. We're very close to obviously the European market in terms of steel making uh, and, and much closer to Asia than some of our competitors uh, which sit in the Americas. So it's quite advantageous from a, a location point of view. Uh, and I think being very close to Europe uh, and having accessible uh, equipment suppliers uh, and industry capability, I think, is, a, is another advantage of, of operating in Ukraine. In terms of risk, uh, I think we've demonstrated that Ukraine's a good environment to operate in. We understand the country and uh, un understand the country very well. Last year, you made a, a, yeah, a tidy profit, about $748 million pre-tax. What affects the amount of money you make? And is this kind of profit the kind of profit that you'd expect to make in most years? What, what, what affects um, growth prospects for Fair Expo? The, the iron, ore, iron ore is traded like a commodity uh, and uh, the price is set like any other commodity. It's on supply and demand. Uh, it's a cyclical business depending upon global growth and what's happening with the steel industry and construction across the world. The, the differentiator uh, over our business in terms of the product that we sell, which is an iron ore pellet, it uh, attracts a premium over and above standard iron ore materials, lump or fines that you would feed into a blast furnace. It attracts a premium because by pelletizing that material, uh, we've provided the steel maker a higher grade product and started the processing of that material. So it's more advantageous and more efficient to use uh, a percentage of pellets in the blast furnace blend. But tra traditionally, it's just driven by supply and demand and what's happening in the steel industry and the global economy as a whole. What are the risks to growth? I mean, you mentioned the global economy. It's uh, where are we in the mining cycle? Is, are there implications for Fair Expo? Look, I think uh, the last 12 months has been, uh, really we could say the last two years, I think uh, there has been significant uncertainty globally with the COVID pandemic and we've seen the impacts of that uh, right across the globe. But significantly in the first part of 2020, we saw that play out with uh, really the entire Europe locking down, uh, which meant that we needed to pivot and shift some of our product into Northeast Asia. I think one of the advantages that Fair Expo has uh, is that we've got an extensive customer portfolio and our product is in high demand. So we, our customers always want more product than we can offer. So I think growth, pro growth prospects for Fair Expo moving forward, uh, it's, it's, it's still there. We still have plenty of opportunity for growth. Uh, what's the company's dividend policy and, and how committed is the business to dividend payouts um, in future? Obviously, we want to return value to shareholders and, and having a dividend policy or shareholder returns policy, which we, we released to the market earlier this week, uh, that's one mechanism by whereby we give value back to shareholders. Uh, our intent is to pay or target a 30% dividend of free cash flow. Um, that's to give certainty around understanding the cyclical nature of the business that we're in but to provide being conservative and providing some certainty to shareholders that there's a minimum level of, of dividends that will be payable. And obviously with our growth program, 
Uh, we've had a balanced cash management program in the past and we intend to do that going forward. Jim, you've been acting chief executive for 18 months now. What's the succession plan for the CEO role? Yeah, look, succession planning for the CEO role, um, I, I get this question a lot around uh, when, will, when and if the appointment will be made permanent. Um, the permanency uh, or, or title change, I guess you can really call it, is not something that I really focus on. Uh, when I took the role on, when the board asked me to take over as CEO, um, I, I'm fully embedded in the role. I've been with the organisation for seven years. I understand the business. So I'm absolutely committed to doing the, doing the CEO role. Uh, and the board will make the decision when they feel it's appropriate. Okay, Jim North, Interim CEO at uh, Fair Expo. Thank you very much for joining me today.